Okay, everybody. Now that we have everybody, we're going to get started. So welcome to our September Ambassador Briefing. Um, just before we get started, I know that this was originally scheduled for yesterday and that I um, did not do the best job of communicating that it was canceled in our Ambassador Newsletter this week, and I apologize for that miscommunication. So thank you for hopping on the line today, and I will make it a priority to be more clear with that. Uh, language moving forward. So thank you so much, and let's get started. So today, we have a number of people on the line talking with you today. Right now, uh, my name is Julie. I'm the manager of Grassroots Advocacy, um, and I have got our Director of Federal Affairs, Vincent Cecilio, with us, Michelle Guadalupe, our Director of State Legislative Affairs, and Sherry Stanley Whitworth, who's from our new technology called Voter Voice. And our purpose today in briefing you will be to give you a brief federal state update, and then move into some of the voter voice training that will help you guys understand all of the great things you can now do um, with our new grassroots management tool. Uh, so to get started, I'm going to pass the microphone to Vincent, who can give you a brief federal update. Hi, everyone. Uh, to those of you who may not know, I'm about three months in uh, with the Arthritis Foundation. Excited to be here. I'm Director of Federal Affairs. I'm overseeing the federal level legislative and regulatory affairs um, and happy to talk to you today about a few um, brief federal updates, uh, particularly step therapy federal legislation, which uh, for many of you, that was the big August recess ask this year. Uh, I want to let everyone know that on September 27th, um, myself, as well as a number of other um, patient groups in town like National Psoriasis Foundation, um, Alliance for Patient Access and others are going to be um, following up on all of your efforts over the August recess for a kind of a mini hill day to talk about HR 2077, which is the step therapy bill, um, and highlight um, all the work that you did over August recess as, as well as reiterate um, all of our collective support for, for that bill. So we're looking forward to that in a couple of weeks. Um, and then the, the second brief update I have for you is a, a status update on the Ensuring Children's Access to Specialty Care Act. Uh, in the House of Representatives. So, as, as you may know, uh, S-989 is the Senate version of the bill, uh, and we expect either to get by the end of this week, um, or this tomorrow, or the beginning of next week, um, the House version of the bill will be introduced by um, Rep. Billy Long of Missouri uh, and Rep. Joe Courtney of Connecticut. So, we're excited for that, um, to have some good bipartisan action now in both chambers of Congress, and um, want to keep that momentum going. So. More updates to come from, from Julie. And the last item I'll mention um, would be to reiterate um, to make sure you get all of your August recess logging in, um, not just so you can make sure that all of your activities are counted, but so we can uh, have a better sense from, from all of your efforts over August um, on how those meetings went so we can do appropriate follow-up at the federal level. So thanks very much. Thanks, Vincent. I appreciate that. Um, so now we're going to switch gears uh, into our state updates with Michelle. Great. Thanks, Julie. Hi, everyone. Michelle Guadalupe. Uh, you know, we have had such a busy 2017. I know I've had an opportunity to speak with this group before. Uh, we really are during next week advocate webinar series, which is on September 20th at 4 p.m. Eastern. We are, I'm going to give you more of a thorough um, overview of what we did in 2017 and what, you know, kind of preview of what's happening in 2018. Uh, your field team members, myself included, we have been having uh, many meetings together, really kind of outlining our priorities uh, for next year, and uh, we're just really excited to kind of share some of that information with you. One of the, I can tell you one kind of um, piece that, that we're excited about that we're going to be doing is, you know, we've had over 70 victories over the past three years. And uh, many of our pieces of legislation uh, are going to be, you know, going into effect in early 18. So we want to kind of capitalize. You guys have been doing such amazing things with, uh, you know, with testifying for us, writing up ads. Uh, now that our bills are actually going to be enacted, we want to just make sure that we provide you with resources so that you can share with your friends, your family. If they're running into some of these different access issues, guess what? We now have this piece of legislation. It has gone into effect, and hopefully we can start making sure that you can have that access to those much-needed medications. My second slide, I just uh, wanted to share that we are now fully staffed. 
Um, we were very excited to say that we were able to hire um, a new person for the middle part of the country, Courtney Kowalowski. Uh, so as you can see, you probably know many of these names. Schultz out west. Courtney is now new in the middle of the country. Pam Fields is up in the Great Lakes in that lighter blue. You have Claudia Stewart down in the southeast, and then you have um, Ben Jendok in um, the New England um, area. And we're just really excited to continue to work with all of you on many of our state updates, and then of course working with um, Vincent and the whole DC team on our federal awesome. priority. Thank you so much, Michelle. That kind of capped off our federal and state update, but I just want to say today is a special day because Michelle is in the D.C. office with us, um, so we're actually face-to-face -face instead of just on the phone, and it's been a really productive couple of uh, meetings that we've had today and yesterday. We've been able to really hit the ground running on priority setting, and you guys are going to hear all about that in the months to come. And with that, I want to share with you a new change for our program. So. Um, something that we've been working on very hard in the past few months is getting some feedback from you that will drive our work for 2018. So you may have seen that in our 2018 priority survey that went out to our advocates, but one thing that we have heard time and time again is that our reporting center is cumbersome and difficult to use, and so we're excited to un reveal our new system called the Voter Voice. Um, so with that, I'm just going to make sure, Sherry, can you hear us and can you uh, make sure that your line is unmuted? Yeah. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much awesome. for the sound check. So I'm going to change the slide and let you introduce Voter Voice to our uh, folks. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, glad to be with you. Glad to have you all in the Voter Voice family. Um, I think as a general overview of what we're going to be just talking about is some tools to help make uh, your advocacy program easier to use, not only from setting it up and being able to measure and monitor what is going on and work more strategically, but also for all the people that are going to be actually taking action, really streamlining the process for those folks as well. Um, and Julie, do you want me just to go through your um, your slide content here, or do you? How do you want to do that? Um, let's tag team it together because I think we can. If you wouldn't mind talking about the tool and what it does in particular, I can talk about exactly how we're going to use it at the AF. Um, so I guess the first tool will be the Voter Voice app. So will you share with everybody a little bit about the easiest way to find the app and how to get it? Absolutely. So um, included in your package of tools is a mobile app. And if you have a, an iOS, aka um, iPhone, or an Android phone, it's in the Google Play Store or in the Apple Store. And you just search for Voter Voice. and if you need help and very detailed instructions, if you're not used to downloading apps, let us know and we'll give you some, you know, little pictures and things to make it easier and more recognizable for you. But if you're more, if you're comfortable and you've been downloading apps, just go to the App Store, download Voter Voice, and it will ask you the first time to put your email in, I think. And then the the once you have the app, you'll have to search for arthritis, and when you do that you'll select arthritis as the directory, basically. And then, from then on out, when you click on your app, it will automatically uh, release and uh, open up for you the arthritis version of Voter Voice. So the first time you do this, is you'll have, I think, two little extra steps in there um, to get it uh, on your phone. But through the app, you'll be able to, um, oh, and one other thing I'll say about the app, when you download it, it will ask you if you want uh, notifications on. I think we're all in agreement that that is going to be really helpful. That way when Julie and her team have something that really needs immediate action, they can push out a notification to you and have it pop up like your weather alerts and other things. Through the app, you'll be able to see it, it, it's going to mirror the desktop or the website version, so all your action alerts will live there, uh, a way for you to look up elected officials' profiles and who their staff are and what committees they're on 
is there in the find officials area, um, as well as any active uh, other act actions, whether they be action alerts or surveys or other things that we're going to be using the tools for uh, in the coming months. Yeah, and I will promise you, because I know that people might not love notifications on their phone, but I will promise all of our investors right here and right now, um, my goal in pushing out a notification to you will simply be a reminder to complete an ambassador survey that would allow you to track your uh, reported activity. So any of your monthly activities, I'm going to help you um, log that activity by simply pushing out a notification directly to your phone that says, hey, don't forget to track your activity this week. Um, and it'll make sure that we really stay on track there so that you won't have to worry at the end of next year to track all of your activity in one fell swoop. You'll be able to do it incrementally really easily um, and check in with me throughout the year on your progress um, as easily as possible. So with that. And I would just what? add another like value add to that when people are being asked. <laughs> because it's going to feed into one system. So uh, it will make Julie and her team work a lot more efficient because they'll be able to say, you know, show me everyone that um, had a meeting that got this response and things like that. So feeding it in through, through the app is going to save a lot of time. Yes, so, so much time. I really appreciate that. And it's going to help us, again, um, as we look at these metrics, we'll be able to look at the ways you engage most easily and the ways that make advocacy um, easy for you to do from your home. And we'll be able to harness that energy by developing more tasks like that for you as we can see what has been successful and what maybe hasn't hit home as well. So with that, let's transition onto one of our tools, which will be I'm really excited about. We haven't rolled it out just yet. Um, but we have a lookup tool for your elected officials. You'll be able to use this through the app, and eventually we're going to house a button right on our website that would allow you to check out who your elected officials are, both on the federal and local side, so you won't have to go to any external website. You'll be able just to go to the Arthritis Foundation page and really see all of the people who you can contact to talk more about your arthritis story. Um, so, Look forward to a rollout for that tool soon, um, and I am excited to, to share that with you. Sherry, do you have any other tips on the elected officials tool? Um, I just think it helps, you know, put a face with what you're hearing um, and right. give you access to their staff and other things that you might not really know about them. Also, have a little bit of background information. So yeah. Um, that, that might be helpful, too, as you're making phone calls or reaching out. Exactly. And something else that's pretty cool is that with this tool, once you look up your elected official, if you were to click on their face or their name and you wanted to write them a letter, you'll instantly have a pop-up of the, the form that you could send over to your elected official and just write them a little note right through our, our web platform. So it's much easier to have a one-stop shop at arthritis.org for all of your advocacy needs. Um, our next piece, and this is the best piece of all, I think, for many of you, is that um, reporting will be much easier with voter voice than it has been in the past with Aristotle 360. So whereas in Aristotle, you had to log into a platform with your email address and um, password every time, uh, now reporting will be as simple as logging on to the Arthritis Foundation website, clicking Ambassador Reporting Center, and completing whatever form lives right there. So the process will be this. Each month, with each monthly activity, I will have a new form for you to complete. It will be as simple as two questions. Did you do this activity? Do you have feedback on this activity? And in that same feedback button, what would you suggest when we do this activity again in the future? And so three easy questions. We'll push them out to you frequently, and you won't have to worry about any login requirement. Um, so what that means is that uh, you'll have an easier opportunity to go through and track your engagement. And hopefully that means less headaches for you and more metrics for our team. <laughs> and the best part about this is that once you download that uh, Voter Voice app, you can do this 
from anywhere because you can take it on your mobile device. And if you have a meeting with an elected official, you can log on to your app immediately there, fill in your survey, and send it off to me and not think about it again for the rest of the year. So you won't have to worry about backlogging. There's an opportunity to log any fundraising or any miles that you've traveled um, so that we can really start to track um, more easily all of your activity. Um, so I hope that that um, comes to you and that you are excited about it, as excited about it as I am. As we transition, I know it is new technology, so if you have trouble with it or you want um, to ask questions, please feel free to contact me at any time with uh, any um, frustrations you're having and we will find the best solution for you. And I really believe that that solution is voter voice and I think that this will be a much more user-friendly opportunity for all of you. Um, for our next piece are our Streamlined Action Center. Um, so we're going to roll out an action center directly on our website so that our website becomes not only a hub for information, um, but also an opportunity to act on it. So in each of our priority um, policy position states that we have listed on our, our website, we will also have an opportunity for you to immediately take action and let your members of Congress and your locally elected officials um, why something is important to you right on our website. And I think that these action alerts are very easy to use. Um, you can see that there's an opportunity not only to write your member of Congress or a local official an email, but you can also tweet directly at them, post to their Facebook page, or simply give their office a call. All information that's populated through the Action Center and easy for you to access. Um, Sherry, do you want to talk a little bit about why these action alerts um, are great? <laughs> Yeah, well, a couple things. Um, as the Action Center is being populated with that information, I think Julie's also going to be pushing it out to you. So you might see it in an email. You might get it on, if you are do have those notifications up, she can push it out that way as well when there's an item that needs immediate action. Um, the easy, I mean, it couldn't be easier for you because if you get a notification or an email, you'll just click on it. And that's going to transport you to the page to actually write the message and take action. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. That is going to um, pre-fill all of your information so you don't have to fill the form out. It will also give you a sample message, whether or not you're making, you're sending an email to that legislator, there'll be a sample email. If she has Twitter or Facebook or phone call uh, options op open to those alerts, then there'll be sample messages or talking points for that phone call. So everything's going to be right there in front of you. Um, we do strongly encourage you to customize that message so you can use what she's provided and add your own story to that, or you may want to zap it out altogether and write your own from scratch, a unique story. It does have help, and members of Congress and their staff do pay attention more when you do have a personal story in there. So we 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 know that everyone's in a hurry and you don't have a lot of time and, and you know time is is um, one of the reasons we have gone to this system just to make it really easy for you. So if you're in a hurry, you can take action in as little as probably 30 seconds. Um, but if you do have a few, an extra minute or two, we strongly encourage you to put some sort of personal message in. And when we say personal message, it doesn't have to be paragraphs. It can just be a couple sentences, something really from the heart and why this issue impacts you and why you really care about it. Exactly. Um, and I think especially our ambassadors are the people who own this, know this, live, eat, and breathe, and sleep this fact of sharing our own personal stories. And um, so those one-sentence advocate speeches that you say in offices, you can also add to these letters to make them stand out just that much more. Um, and yeah, we really appreciate that. So the next piece. Um, Julie, do you, mind if, that, if we just, do you mind if we talk about one thing before we get to that? Um, because once you do take the action, you'll, you'll land on this confirmation page, and it will also give you the opportunity, if you do use social platforms, to share these uh, alerts out with your friends and family. So um, you don't see a picture of it here, but if, 
if you get to that next page, once you hit the submit button, um, you can just share it. Share it on your Facebook page or share it on your Twitter feed or if you're on LinkedIn, any of those platforms. Um, if you also <laughs> have an uh, email list, you can email it out to your friends and family. And lastly, if any of you happen to have a blog or manage other websites maybe for your own, uh, you know, other things that you do in your life, uh, you can also share it out <laughs> ways as well. Yeah, and that's such a good idea, especially a lot of our ambassadors do uh, have blogs that they post about their arthritis advocacy, and so this would be a really good way to make that all the more action center friendly. Thank you. Okay, so our next tool um, is through this center we'll be able to recruit much more easily than we have in the past. Now that we are using voter voice, whenever we have somebody um, sign onto an action alert or send information in a survey, their name will be added to our Army of Advocates list. And so that might just mean that they start to receive our newsletter, but it might mean that once they receive it, they see some information that encourages them to act more frequently and to share their story in a new way. Um, so what the goal here is, is to whenever we are at a local event, like a Walk to Cure Arthritis or a Jingle Bell Run, my goal will be to have um, an action alert or a petition that will be easily accessed on a mobile device for your advocacy booth. And at these advocacy booths, if you can just have people sign on to support public health funding for the CDC during their Walk to Cure Arthritis, they'll immediately be added to our um, advocate network and can start to receive more information about action items that they can uh, pursue and take and, and really be, become more entrenched in what the work that we are doing um, and make it so much easier for all of you to meet those recruitment goals that you have outlined in your bonus activities for Platinum Ambassador. Um, so this will definitely help bring um, recruitment to the forefront of our work, and it can be something that we can do much more easily um, because we're so much more mobile enabled than we have been before. Um, and with that, that kind of caps off our um, voter voice tool chat. There's so many more tools to, to come that we will be rolling out in months uh, in, the, in, in the future. Um, but for right now, those are the ones we want to showcase to you. Sherry, I want to thank you so much for hopping on and helping to discuss our voter voice platform. We're so excited to start working um, more closely with you guys. Thanks, Julie. We're excited to have you on board and help you guys with your very important mission. Thank you. So now that brings us to our September activity, um, which is really going to be very simple. <laughs> the September activity is just to test out our new tools. So if, I know that many of you have done this already, but if you haven't, please log on to our website and go into our reporting center, which can be found um, under our ambassador tab on our website, um, and log your activity for this year. In particular, um, as Vincent and our federal team start to go to the hill on our federal step therapy legislation, if you can log more information on your August recess visits, uh, in particular those step therapy conversations you've had when, you, when your members of Congress were at home, that would be especially important to know. Um, we are going through our ambassador reporting center to determine who has won um, our platinum ambassador awards for 2017. Um, and the deadline to report is September 30th. So you have until the end of this month to record all of your um, ambassador activities from this year. Um, and you can do so very easily through our new voter voice tool. Um, next week, we'll be having our advocate webinar series on September 20th at 4 p.m. Uh, Michelle Guadalupe is going to be our guest speaker, and she's going to really give us a full um, update on what's going on in the states and what you guys have to look forward to um, as we move forward. So that will be at 4 o'clock Eastern time next week on, on September 20th, and it will be about half an hour. Um, so please call in and log into the WebEx for that. And last but not least, we have an opportunity for questions. So if you uh, have a minute, we have our Q&A open and our chat feature open, and you can feel free to 
type questions in there or simply hit pound six to unmute your line and ask a question um, on the phone. All right, well, we don't see anything coming in, so I'm going to just end with my contact information so that if you do have a question that you'd like to ask offline, um, you'll be able to. Uh, my email address is jeller at arthritis.org. You can call me at my phone number, 202-887-2916, or if you have a question for the good of the order that can be asked in 140 characters or less, just simply tweet me at julieellerAF, um, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for joining us today, um, and I look forward to working with you all with these new voter voice tools. Um, with that, if you are here for, if you're a new ambassador, stay on the line for ambassador orientation, um, which will take place in four minutes. So thanks so much. Thanks, Julie. Have a nice day. You too. All right, everybody, thanks for staying online for our new ambassador orientation. Welcome, and we're so glad to have you here, and I'm glad that you had just presumably listened to your first 
of our ambassador briefing just a half an hour ago. So as you can see from that briefing, I know we have a lot in store for all of you. Um, we had some of our um, some of our uh, I'm just going to change this really fast. I'm sorry. Um, okay, we had some of our new tools debuted on this ambassador orientation. <coughs> and some updates from our state and federal uh, teams. So I'm so glad to have you all here. I have a bit of a frog in my throat, so I'm sorry about that, but we'll get through the coughing together. <laughs> so um, my name is Julie Eller, and I'm the manager of grassroots advocacy for the Arthritis Foundation. Um, if we've met before, I'm so glad to have you here, and if this is our first meeting, I'm really, really thankful uh, to have this opportunity to e-meet you. <laughs> I have been involved with the Arthritis Foundation for just over a year now, and it's my job to oversee all of our advocacy programming. Our advocates, our ambassadors, our platinum ambassadors, and our junior ambassadors all fall under my umbrella. Um, so my job is to help everyone share their arthritis story in a new and exciting way. I myself have had rheumatoid arthritis since I was seven years old, um, and through this program, I was able to really learn how best to own my story and turn it into some positive action. So I'm really excited to have that opportunity to do that now with you. Um, so what is the Ambassador Program? Well, the Ambassador Program is our, what we call, grass top advocacy program. What that means is that we have our ambassadors as our liaisons that serve um, to build connections between the Arthritis Foundation and their members of Congress and locally elected officials. Ambassadors are asked to work with the Foundation on special assignments every other month that advance the Foundation's advocacy efforts um, and allow them to share their story with important decision makers. Um, our ambassadors are the reason that we have a human face behind our policy decisions. We are the connection point between the patient story and the, for, for the elected official to see what a policy means for them in real time. So our ambassadors are the essential link to making uh, legislative action possible. I am so thankful to have our ambassadors and to be able to offer them different tools and resources that can allow them to share these stories. So we will have a webinar like this one every other month that has an update on our state and federal agendas um, with guest speakers like Sherry, who came in to talk about voter voice, and an activity that will help all of you uh, stay on track in building these relationships. Our monthly activities are important because they give you an opportunity to have an assigned task that allows you to do a little bit more in sharing your story and building that relationship. So these will be a variety of tasks. They can be anything from inviting your elected official to a Jingle Bell Run event to asking them to join an arthritis caucus or sign on to a letter. Now these actions can take less than 15 minutes and it's my goal to make them as easy to take advantage of as possible. So we will be having these activities housed primarily through this voter voice um, mobile app and website that will allow you to take action as easily as possible. We know you have valuable stories to tell, um, and we know that sometimes they have long and twisting backgrounds, so we want to make it as easy as possible for you to take action. Throughout the year, you'll learn more and more and more about harnessing the the passion that you have for storytelling, and our goal is that at the end of the ambassador year, um, in August, you will have the opportunity to go to an August in-district visit with your member of Congress on different apps um, that will help advance um, access to care for people with arthritis. So we've just concluded our rounds of August recesses for this year, um, and we had people go and talk to their members of Congress about a few different things, and we'll break into that in a few minutes. The most important thing is to know that your voice is important and essential. Advocacy is the process that exists 
to make sure that our elected officials know the importance of arthritis and how it impacts your life. Now, though arthritis is a disease that is experienced by so many members of our country, it's really important to talk about the disease itself with Congress and in your state legislatures because even though it's pervasive, sometimes that human story that drives action isn't always in the forefront of our legislative officials' minds. So we have the opportunity to share that story and let our expertise lead the way. There is no better expert on arthritis than you as a patient, as a caregiver, as a neighbor, as a friend. You are the expert on arthritis, and it's our job to help share that learning and that experience with members of Congress and legislatures who make important policy decisions uh, both nationally and in your state. So the important thing to learn is that we have a large, large amount of uh, people who are passionate and excited about arthritis, and we can harness that in passion by talking with our government. So I don't know if you remember high school government too well. Um, I know that during high school government, I learned a whole lot of civics, and now I use that civics every day. But let's give a crash course right now in what our high school government taught us. So on the federal level of government, we have 435 representatives in the House and 100 senators. The representatives are based on the population in your state, and the senators are two per state. The bills are introduced in the House and the Senate, and then they are referred to committees. Bills must make it through hearings and committee meetings before they get passed by the House and the Senate. And the legislative process is such that a constituent will have a concern, and they will go to their elected official and say, I have this problem and I need your help. The, con the member of Congress or the locally elected official will then take that concern and turn it into a bill, which he or she will introduce into the House and Senate, um, and it will get referred into committee. And then from the committee, once passed, it will go to a larger body, the whole deciding body in either the House or the Senate. And once passed there, it will go to the other chamber of Congress before it gets passed and signed by the president, either to pass into law or for a veto. So this is what the process looks like in a little infographic. You can see that the bill will be introduced in Congress here. And either it will be introduced in the House or in the Senate. If it goes to the House first, it'll be placed in committee and then we'll go to full vote. Once it's been voted out of the House, it will be sent over to the Senate. <laughs> and once it's in the Senate, it'll again go to committee, go to a full vote, and then after it's been passed by both houses, be sent to the President either for a signature, passing it into law, or a veto. So what does that mean? How can we find our elected officials? How can we share with them our concerns? Well, right now, you can go either to the House.gov website or the Senate.gov website to identify who your representatives and senators are. But this will soon change when we host our Find Your Elected Officials tool directly on our Arthritis Foundation website. Um, that change will be coming in the next few months, and when it does, I will be sure to notify all of you. Um, until that time, uh, please continue to use these websites. Now let's talk a little bit more about what a congressional office looks like. A congressional office is structured such that we have a number of different tiers of individuals that might see our story. The people who are most important to us are legislative assistants. So although we want to share our stories with members of Congress, the people who will do the best storytelling on our behalf are legislative assistants the staff who work in offices of Congress. Um, legislative assistants usually have specialties, and many of them have specialties in health that will allow them the expertise to understand the policy background that drives the stories that we bring to them every day. Um, so please uh, know that when you're talking to a legislative assistant, you're talking to the health expert in that office someone who can really put forward um, the 
to, and speak into the ear of that member of Congress to make sure that he or she knows exactly how a policy is affecting their constituents. So what does this look like for our work on the federal side? Well, this year our federal portfolio has been varied. We have our healthcare principles that help us drive conversation toward patient-centered solutions in healthcare. As you know, there was a, a spirited healthcare reform debate this year, um, and our focus has been to drive healthcare principles that will identify patient-centered solutions to healthcare. Um, that means that the focus of healthcare should be on the ultimate stakeholder, each and every one of you, patients. Um, and that work is supported by our research drive. So we are trying to establish a dedicated research program at the Department of Defense funded at $20 million. Um, this is uh, also mirrored in our support for arthritis programs at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the National Institutes for Health. And finally, our easiest ask is our Congressional Arthritis Caucus ask. Right now, there are 141 members of Congress who are a part of the Arthritis Caucus. This is a bipartisan group of members of Congress that, whose goal it is to advance arthritis issues in Congress and make sure that their uh, staff members, their team members, know exactly how best to talk about um, arthritis and policy issues that face our community. Next, we have our state portfolio. Now, our state portfolio is large and in charge, but our action takes place primarily in the state. Um, we work with our individual state directors on a whole lot of action, and these are the ones that issue areas that have been most successful and important to all of us. The first is a biosimilar substitution piece of legislation. So for some of you, if you're an arthritis patient or a caregiver, you might be familiar with a uh, class of medications called biologics. These are drugs like Enbrel and Humira, and these drugs are some of the most successful drugs for treating rheumatoid arthritis and other iterations of immunoarthritis conditions, um, but they are also um, drugs that are expensive, and there is a new class of drugs called biosimilars um, that are going to be coming to market whose goal is to increase competition, which eventually will increase access by decreasing the overall cost associated with the biologic therapy. When this happens, we are hoping to protect patients by passing biosimilar substitution laws so that if um, a substitution of an interchangeable biosimilar product was made for a biosimilar or for biologic that the patient, the provider, and the prescriber would all be notified of the change so that there's transparent communication across the healthcare spectrum um, with a patient centered focus. Another piece of legislation that we work on is formulary transparency so that. We can be sure that our, our patients and, and families are selecting the insurance plan that has the best formulary for them that won't be um, changed or um, out of date when they're selecting it so that they know that what they select offers the best uh, opportunity for them to, to have the best care. We also look at narrow provider networks to make sure that we know um, how to um, identify the best ways for us to select plans that will enable us to have uh, providers that offer us the best care. Another piece of legislation we look at are out-of-pocket medication costs. Um, and we just did a survey that let us know that this is one of the top priorities for many of our advocates and ambassadors, looking at how best to control the affordability of costs um, through policy. So this will be something that we build out even more this year. We also look at prior authorization and step therapy as insurance protocols that would help to increase access to care by making sure that we don't have to go through a incredible appeals process and that we don't have to try and fail multiple drugs before we got the one that works for us. Um, so all of these 
different positions are available on our website that you can read and really get a full understanding of. And if you have questions, please feel free to type them in your chat feature. Um, but these are different pieces that you will be able to share your story to work on as we move forward. One of the opportunities you will have um, to share your story would be at the Platinum Ambassador Fly-In or at the Advocacy Summit. This year, we're hosting a Platinum Ambassador Fly-In, which will be open to our Platinum Ambassadors for highly engaged and specialized training. This will take place March 12th and 13th of this year. Um, and in order to be eligible to come, you would have had to accomplish the Platinum Ambassador Award in 2017. Um, that means that the opportunity next for you to come to Washington, D.C. will be in 2019 for our full Advocacy Summit. Um, here, you would be sponsored to come if you accomplish our Platinum Ambassador Award during this year. The way you can do that is by engaging each month uh, with our monthly activities, logging them, recording some bonus activities, and fundraising $1,000 as your fundraising requirement to be a Platinum Ambassador. All of this means one thing, that we have the opportunity to tell our story. And how are you going to do that if you've never done it before? Well, telling your story is as easy as talking to your doctor about how you're feeling or your child's teacher about their arthritis. We advocate for ourselves every day, even if we don't know it, as traditional advocacy. So we have a number of tools that you can use to guide this kind of conversation, including our advocacy toolkit, which is housed on our website. But the keys are to be honest with your story. Share exactly how it is that your life is affected by arthritis and how your life is affected by a particular policy. If a policy is negatively impacting you, like perhaps you've tried um, Step, uh, to go through a step therapy protocol that has um, prevented you from accessing the care that you need, as long as you are honest and tell how that story has affected you personally, you are being an advocate for arthritis. We want to tell what happens when um, arthritis flares and what is the result for your family. The goal would be to be memorable and succinct. We want to share our story in as little as one sentence with as much impact as possible. One way to do this is through social media. And if you are on social media, on Twitter especially, you can tag your legislators and let them know about um, different uh, policy needs that you have in as little as 140 characters. Here are some examples of short and sweet storytelling from the Ross family. At three, my wife was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis. It's actually what took her sight. Another story here is my medications cost $1,200 per month. These high out-of-pocket costs and hidden costs of arthritis, which may not be as well known, are very helpful in sharing your stories so that you can be memorable and succinct. One way to really harness your ability to share your story is through our Advocacy Toolkit, which is available online. Here you'll learn with step uh, outline guides how to uh, write a letter to the editor of your newspaper, how to write a letter to your member of Congress, what a good tweet looks like, and different um, skills in advocacy like that. If you'd like a paper copy, simply send me an email with your address, and I will send one right your way. And that way you can have and highlight the addition of the Voices Up Barriers Down toolkit so that you can really guide your conversation and have um, those uh, resources available to you. The next thing that's super important for ambassadors is to make sure that you are reporting your activities through our reporting center. Now, I know that we just talked about this during our full ambassador briefing, so just please remember to go to the Ambassador Reporting Center if you can, please download our Voter Voice app and check out our Arthritis Foundation uh, tools that are available to you there. Next, please join us for our Advocate webinar series next week on September 20th. It will be an update on what we've done across the nation in our states with Michelle Guadalupe. It will take place at 4 p.m. Eastern next week for 30 minutes. 
Last but not least, if you have any questions, please hit pound six to unmute your line or simply type them in the chat or Q&A feature in your um, WebEx. All right, so with that, I'm just going to leave my contact information up as our final slide. Um, once it flips, okay. So you can email me easily at jeller at arthritis.org, call me at 202-887-2916, or tweet me by just simply following the handle at Julie Eller, AF, um, and we will get in contact and be able to uh, really share your stories. Thank you so much for joining us, and we're excited to have you as members of our ambassador program. And with that, um, I thank you for your time. Have a good day, everyone, and I look forward to talking to you all again soon. Bye now.